It is a bit chilly tonight. Anyway, we need to do this. Welcome to another episode here from the Offgrid Garage Late Night Show. In today's episode, we want to talk about this smart shunt, the Victron smart shunt in particular. I want to show you the settings. We want to talk about the settings. And if you think this might not be interesting for you because you don't have this Victron smart shunt, you don't have a smart shunt at all, probably you have a smart shunt and you're not aware of it. So let's have a closer look. See, when I started building my battery 1.0, one and a half years ago. I bought the Victron Smart Shunt because, well, all my other gear was Victron. I had the small inverter already, I had solar charge controllers, and I thought, stay within the Victron ecosystem and everything will be fine. And you buy the Smart Shunt as well because this gives you an indication how full your battery is. And people said, nah, you don't need it. That's wasted money, $260 or something wasted because you already have a shunt in your BMS which measures the capacity of your battery. If you have a battery, most likely you have a smart BMS and this has also a smart shunt. It measures the current going in and out of your battery and then calculates the state of charge in percent because as we know from our many, 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 many tests here on the channel, we cannot use the voltage to determine the state of charge of our lithium iron phosphate battery. The curve is just too flat, right? So we need to have another reliable measurement method in our system, which shows us how full our battery is. Because at 3.2 volts, it could be anything between 30 and 80% state of charge. You, you just don't know. So let's have a quick look in our Overkill Solar BMS, which is our top battery shelf. And here the BMS claims we have 10% state of charge. Remaining capacity is only 30 ampere hours. Okay, the JK BMS claims we have, um, it doesn't even tell you. Ah, here, remaining battery, 39%. The Overkill 10% and this one here 39%. I mean, this is just crazy, right? And it claims we have a capacity left of 109 ampere hours. This is the second battery, which is in parallel to the first one. So the voltage is exactly the same, but the calculated state of charge is completely different. Would be interesting now to disconnect these parallel battery banks and discharge them and see how much capacity we actually get out of them. That would be a very interesting test. And last but not least, the bottom shelf battery with our um, um, Heltec, not Hengsa, Heltec BMS, which claims 20% state of charge. We've got 10, 39 and 20% state of charge. Does it tell us how much capacity we have left? It's a 280 ampere hours. No, it doesn't actually tell us here. Uh, no, this one doesn't tell us. Okay, and now we want to go into our Victron smart shunt and see what the actual capacity of the battery is. What the smart shunt claims, 18%. So <laughs> the winner here actually is the Heltec BMS. <laughs> Who would have thought, right? Who would have thought? It's the closest to 18%. Amazing. So, and here you can see the more devices you have, which are measuring your state of charge, the more results you will get. They will never, never match unless you fully charge your battery. And here, if you go into the history of our smart BMS, smart shunt, we can see it was 46 days ago when we fully charged our battery for the last time. So if you have only one battery with one smart BMS, which has already a built-in shunt, you can certainly use this to determine the state of charge of a battery because there's only one device which measures and calculates state of charge. As soon as you have more than one battery in parallel, you have the conflict. You don't know which one is correct. And as you know, I've got three battery banks in parallel here. So I really decided to keep the Victron Smart Shunt and this is my main point of truth here. I don't give a rat's shit what all the other smart shunts show in the BMSs. I trust the Victron Smart Shunt. This is my point of truth. And I will show you here in the settings why this is. If we go to the VE Smart Network here, you can see the smart shunt here is transmitting the battery voltage and the battery current to all the other devices 
to the solar charge controllers and also to the inverters. They're all talking to each other through this Bluetooth network here. So here again, as an example, our battery shelf with the three battery banks and each battery bank has its own BMS with an included smart shunt. But they measure only the current going into each battery bank. So this one measures this battery bank, the JK measures this one and the Heltec BMS measures this battery bank. So to determine the state of charge, I would need to go in each in all three of these BMSs now and have a look what the remaining capacity in ampere hours is and calculate this all together. This is not how it works, right? Now at the end, you can see the main bus bar positive negative going all the way up in our DC distribution area here. And if I lift this lid up here, you can see that there's the smart shunt. There it is. That's where it is. This is at the end of our main bus bar and it measures the current and energy going into this system. And then it doesn't care anymore if this battery gets a bit more charged than the other two or the other way around. It doesn't matter. This is current going into our battery pack. It doesn't matter if you have only one bank or two or three or four or five. So only one device measures the current going in and out of our battery. Okay, let's have a look at the settings here in the Victron Smart Shunt. Okay, so here the first parameter is the battery capacity. Of course, you need to tell the smart shunt how much your overall capacity of your battery is. So it knows what is 100%. In my case, this is 304 ampere hours plus 280 plus 280. This is 864 ampere hours at 50 volts. Yeah, that is insane 44 kilowatt hours. I want to jump over the next parameter here. We're going to the discharge floor first. The discharge floor is basically only a setting which helps calculating the remaining time of your battery. You can see here at the bottom in the status page, under this current load of 620 watts, the battery would last another 12 hours and 51 minutes until it's 100% empty. So it's fully discharged, 0% state of charge. It calculates this time because I have set a discharge flow of 0%. So if we change the discharge flow to 10%, wait for the green tick, there it is, and go back into our settings, we can see the time remaining is only five hours, half of the time only. So you still have the same capacity of your battery, of course, but the smart shunt now calculates to leave a 10% buffer at the bottom of the battery. So after five hours and 35 minutes now, we would reach 0% state of charge but we still have 10 percent left and you would you would think why is this good why would you use that so if you want to discharge your battery to only 10 percent state of charge you can set the discharge floor to 10 percent and then you have an exact reading of your remaining time of your battery runtime i think this is especially handy if you have a boat and you want to run your navigation lights and your radio from the battery still but you want to turn off your coffee machine and your, your radio and your TV and stuff like this. So when the smart shunt tells you 0%, you have to turn off your TV and you have to go to bed, but you know you still got 10% in your battery. So with this setting, you can basically set your zero point of your battery to whatever level you want. I don't need this function here in the off-grid garage. I want to see the true remaining runtime of my battery. So I put this to zero. And then if we go back to the status page and I can see almost 13 hours of remaining runtime. Okay, the next setting is the Pucot, pu, pu, Pucot. Okay, the next setting we want to have a look at is the Pucot exponent. And this is an exponent, this is a factor mostly used by, um, here, here, here. Yeah, some of my viewers are as old as I am, so they remember this old battery technology we had here, lit acid batteries. And the Pucot exponent gives you an indication of how much capacity your battery has under different loads. Because with these batteries it was, if you discharge it with only very small currents, you could see an increase in capacity, so you get more capacity out of it. And in contrast, if you discharge it with a higher load, you could see a decrease in capacity, so you got less 
less energy out of your battery again. Thankfully, these times are over and we now have lithium batteries and there is almost no PUCOT exponent or PUCOT factor anymore. It doesn't really matter if you discharge your lithium battery with a high or low current. The capacity you are getting out of it is almost the same. There is almost no difference. And if you Google this online, you can find, depending on your chemistry of your lithium battery, a PUCOT exponent of 1.0 to 1.03. So I have set my one to 1.01. Does it really matter? Probably not so much. It is a relict from the lead acid battery area. And the charge efficiency factor sits on 99% for my batteries. So again, here in rare contrast to lead acid batteries, lithium batteries have a very, very high charging efficiency factor. So you almost get all the energy back from your battery, what you have charged into it. And hence 99%. And the current threshold is where your smart shunt starts measuring. Everything under 0.1 amps will be ignored by the smart shunt. This is mainly to eliminate noise. You know, if you have cables parallel to other power cables, for example, you get these spikes and surges on your, on your DC cable. And if you go too low with this value, the smart shunt picks this up and starts calculating this as a load. And this rather contributes then to a false calculation of your state of charge. So this is the default setting of 0.1 amps and I have never changed it. So probably a good idea to leave it at this value as well. And the last one is the time to go period. It sits on three minutes. That means it looks at the last three minutes of your consumption of your power consumption and then calculates the remaining time out of that. So I guess this setting depends a bit on your load. If you have very large loads for a short moment, like starting motors or inverters, you probably go a little bit up with this time. And if you have very smooth and shallow currents, you can go a little bit further down. Otherwise your remaining time value gets very jumpy or very delayed. So you can play around with this one and see what suits you most. But three minutes is the default value. So I've left it there and I think it's fine. So battery start synchronized is turned off in my case here because I don't want the smart shunt to go to 100% if I power it on. So turning this feature on will give you a 100% state of charge when you turn on your smart shunt. If you leave it off, you will get three dashes. And here in the next line, you can set a state of charge manually. So if you can still remember what the state of charge of your battery was before you power down your smart shunt, you can click on this field and type in the approximate state of charge again. And from there, it will then start calculating again. I found this better than having the smart shunt jumping to 100% because 100% is definitely not right. So I rather make a guess from what I can remember or what the VRM shows you, and you got at least a good idea what the state of charge is. You can also click this button underneath here, synchronize state of charge to 100%. This is when your battery fully charges and your smart shunt does not auto reset. You can do this manually here. There's also a zero current calibration. If your smart shunt shows some sort of current, even there's nothing connected to it, you can calibrate it here back to zero. That's a very nice feature missing in most BMSs. Okay, and as you have seen, I have jumped over three of the parameters up here in our settings. And I did this on purpose because these three parameters are responsible for resetting your smart shunt automatically to 100% state of charge. And all these three parameters need to be true. So all the values you have set for them need to be met. So in this case, the charge voltage. So the smart shunt needs to measure 55.1 volts in my case. This is one criteria. This does not reset the smart shunt yet. The tail current needs to be under 0.5%. And this is from your maximum capacity. So from 864 ampere hours, 0.5%. This is like 40. So again here, I need to be at 55.1 volts and the current needs to be under 0.5%. So under 43 amps. And the charge detection time needs to be 10 minutes. So 55.1 volts and the current under 43 amps for 10 minutes. And only then the smart shunt resets to 100%. 
and you need to figure out how to set these three parameters for your system individually. You cannot use my settings here, they won't work for your setup. So determine your maximum charge voltage. My one is 55.2. So I went a little bit lower here with the smart shunt because while you're charging and there's a cloud coming and your voltage goes down, well, then this criteria is not met, right? And I'm sure I have not figured out how to set them correctly for my system now here because I have only fully charged this battery twice so far and I still have to wait for summertime to come now to fully charge this battery and then I can play around with these parameters and see which one are working and which are not. Okay, I think these are all the parameters you need to know about in the smart chart. We can have a very quick look at all the other settings in here because there are not too many. Um, the alarm functions, well, it's only an alarm which prompts you here on the Victron Connect app, if you are in the app, it also displays an alarm in the VRM. And this is the only place where you can actually do something with these alarms. So you can trigger an email, for example. I have turned this off immediately because it was annoying. It has sent me so many emails overnight because the state of charge was under 10% for quite some time. And it kept sending me emails. Your state of charge is low. You need to recharge your battery. Come on, Andy, recharge me. So I, I turned this off in the VRM. I don't want to get any emails about the state of charge. But if you have multiple sites to monitor, it's probably a good idea to set these alarms accordingly and also the email functionality. So whatever station you are monitoring, it sends you an email with the parameters and the actual alarm you have set then. You can also set a low and a high voltage alarm here, but this is just again for displaying purposes here. The smart shunt itself has no uh, relay contact or something. There is a different device to the smart shunt. It's called the Victron battery monitor, and this has a programmable relay. So you can actually use this relay to turn on a charger at low state of charge or to turn on your hot water system or your pool pump at a high state of charge, just with a battery monitor. And here under miscellaneous, you can set the mode of your smart shunt to battery monitor or, or DC energy meter. So battery monitor is the right setting for a smart shunt for measuring the capacity of your battery. So with the DC energy meter, you can also use the smart shunt as an energy meter. If you have a certain DC load you want to measure, you can use this device for that. And the status screen will change as well. And it gives you different numbers then. And the auxiliary input is the smart shunt actually has two terminals. One is for the voltage sense. So it measures the voltage directly at your battery. And the other one can be programmed like this. So if you have a starter battery, for example, it can determine the voltage of the starter battery and shows this in your status page. The midpoint is if you have two 12 volt batteries in series, it can measure the voltage in between. So you know if your batteries are balanced. You can connect a temperature sensor if you want to, or you can do the none option then. So it doesn't do anything. And then we have the VE smart network, which we've already talked about. So, and these are all the parameters we have to set in our smart chunt. I'll take a screenshot of this one here for the homepage. All these parameters I will publish on my homepage as well. We already have the Victron smart solar charge controllers there. We also have the JKBMS with all the settings explained. And now this is the third one here, the Victron smart chunt with its handful of parameters to set. So guys, if you need an additional smart shunt, well, that's totally up to you. And what kind of setup you have, what kind of installation you have. If you have more than one BMS in your installation, you probably want to get the smart shunt because it saves you from logging into every single BMS and reading the single state of charges. And then you even don't know which one is true. So I made the Victron smart chant as my point of truth and I don't care what the BMSs are showing us. Okay guys, as always, I link the Victron smart chant and the Victron battery monitor down below and on my website as well. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support here on the channel. You are amazing guys. Until the next video, you stay charged, stay safe and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. You can um, now turn off. It's it's gone. Then turn off now. Now. Now.